Uh, so, the power of an everyday vision board. Anyone heard of the concept of a vision board? Can you put your hand up? One, two, three. Okay, you've heard of the concept vision boards? No? One, two, three. Just the vision. Yeah, just the vision, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, the vision board is the application side of the vision. Um, it's a physical way of applying uh, a vision that you may see in your mind of what you want to accomplish in the future and then knowing how to accomplish it. Um, success happens through systems, right? So if you have a system in place, uh, then to accomplish a goal, then you will more than likely accomplish it if you stick, stick to the path. Uh, is there anyone here that has uh, goals or, or dreams uh, of what they want to accomplish in the future? Oh, yes. One, two, yes. three, four, five, six, then you're in the right class. Uh, is there anyone here that feels like they've got a rock solid system in place that they that will help them to get to those goals and dreams? Yes. Cool. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> yeah, cool. This is going to be an add, uh, an added um, piece to that system uh, that I really believe that, that will help you. I want to start off with a, t uh, with a story. So let me tell you about a story. Um, in May 2018, I had a goal to take my wife and I to Samoa for my wife's family reunion. And we had a very um, inconsistent flow of income during this time. We had just come back from Prague in the Czech Republic the month before, and I had no money saved to go to Samoa. The trip to Samoa was two months away. July. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone from Samoa? Yes? Perfect. It's beautiful. It's beautiful there. This is uh, not even really a snippet of Samoa, but it, it was an image that I got from, from Google to <laughs> show you what Samoa kind of looks like. So I set out this goal, and the goal was lofty. It was a very uh, audacious goal to make. Two months away, we just came back from overseas in the Czech Republic. We spent all our money there. We didn't have a consistent flow of income during this time. I tried to do business and entrepreneurship head on, um, which created a lot of this uh, in our lives. Um, but I, I had a goal to take my wife back to her, her, um, her roots, where she'd never been before, and, um, and to experience this family reunion. So I learned about this concept of vision board. And I, within the space of two months, was able to go out and find ways to bring in enough income to purchase tickets two weeks before we left. And enough to be able to not only purchase tickets, but also have enough to, you know, to have a good time over there. And also have enough to be able to come back home and not be in debt. Um, but to be able to survive for a couple more weeks or a month. Uh, now, this is, this is um, a story that I tell because as this happened, I, um, I had this vision. I had this vision of a place that I had seen multiple times in Samoa over the internet and through friends and family that told me about this place. And the vision, I saw myself here at this place. And I also saw myself and my wife at the family reunion. And so when I had this vision, it felt so real, I, I just had to find a way to get there. And to some people, my circumstances that we were in, two months before the reunion started, had just come back from overseas and we didn't get really any pennies saved for this trip. Um, some people were going, oh, it's impossible, it's not really going to work, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's too far of a, a goal. Um, but I was determined. Uh, within that two months of time, we were able to save up around six and a half thousand dollars to be able to put towards the stuff. Uh, and this was just through means of hard work and looking for opportunities to be able to make extra income. Um, it worked out some way and somehow, and lo and behold, we were there at the family reunion uh, in July of 2018. Not only were we able to go to the family reunion and experience this, but I was able to go to this place. Um, that I saw in images of this beautiful, luxurious swimming hole in Samoa. Um, Tosua? Tosua? Tosua, is that right? Um, and, and I was able to be able to capture this image. 
of accomplishing this goal. It felt so good. It felt so good to be able to um, to have a vision of somewhere I wanted to wanted to be for myself and my family, and then put down a certain system of how to get there, and then find it come to fruition and work out. Is there anyone here that's that's done that before, where they've had a, an idea of what they want to accomplish, they put down a goal somewhere, and then they worked hard to accomplish it? Cool. Um, can someone give me an example, an experience of, of what that um, what that looked like for you? What was it? Yes. What was your goal, and then how um, my, how did it feel? My niece was getting married overseas, and um, I, I had a job, temping job, which is inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's me, my daughter, and her twins, and my son. Mm -hmm. That's five of us all together. We saved really saved it you know watched our money and we made it to hawaii wow that's awesome within a short time but yes. not as short as yours oh yes short as short though eh? and how did that feel when you got there and you and you realized that you you came from where you were and you got to where you are now how did that feel to you um i we both we all felt because the whole family we worked for this goal we committed to um depositing the money to the travel agent, so we knew we were committed to go in there and pay up. So rather than have a good time uh, spending the money on shopping, we'd cut down on everything, even our groceries, and the cheapest you could go for, and live cheaply. And we, this has actually helped my daughter, who's a, a single mother, to cope on her own when. You know, we are no longer living together with her, with her children. And now that they use apply that principle to, um, like you said, you know, commit yourself in 6,000 plus. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Um, anyone else want to share one goal that really meant a lot to them? They had this goal down, they had a vision of it, and then they accomplished it and how it felt. Um, yep. Yeah, I had a goal uh, as because I uh, really go with mothers. So my goal was to get to find something that has got to do with numbers. And then I registered one um, for my course, um, business accounting, civil services, and all that. So I completed that course, and then it actually made me feel great. And I was going through, while I was doing that course, my grandmother passed away. So I was trying to puzzle whether I should go to my grandmother's or stay, finish up my course, which is I had to do source of my life. And I think I went to work up and finished it. That's awesome. That is awesome. And how did it feel for you doing that? Awesome. Systems bring success. Uh, a, a strong system in place can bring success, and that's really important to know. Um, it's you, you never you never get a good uh, you never get success by just going with the flow. It will come and go, but it will never be stable, like you said. Um, so it's important to know that. <coughs> what is a vision? This is a cons uh, This is a, um, a this is a definition that I really liked personally. Um, of what a vision is. Can, um, can you read Yeah. Um, the capability to see beyond your current reality, creating and inventing that which does not now exist. Cool. So the capability to see beyond your current reality, creating and inventing that which does not now exist. I think that's pretty profound. And that is exactly what a vision is. It's not about where you are right now. It's not about thinking of the reality of the circumstances you're in. 
um, it's thinking about the future and the possibilities of the future that you want for yourself. And the limits to your future are only based on your limitations and your thoughts. Hey, come on in. Cool. We're just talking about the vision board concept, the power of an everyday vision board. And we're just talking about the meaning of uh, what a vision is here. Um, and I want to I want to teach you um, how your mind works. And the reason why I want to teach you how your mind works is because understanding this knowledge will help you to strengthen your visions and also help you to know how to better apply the vision board concept by the end of it. Does that make sense? Cool. So I was taught by a very successful man in, in the United States on my mission. He was a mentor of mine. Clyde Bodden was his name. Um, he was so successful that we lived in his pool house as elders and it was probably the nicest uh, it was probably the nicest um, apartment that any missionary in my mission had ever stayed in before. <laughs> and that was the pool house of his, of his um, very luxurious home. This man had gone through the dumps uh, where his wife had left him um, for a member in the ward, unfortunately. Um, but he, he went through some really dark, dark times in his life. And someone was able to be wise enough to be able to pull him out. And from them being able to pull him out, he was able to open up his vision and accomplish all these amazing goals that he's accomplished so far in his life. So he sat me down one night and he said, Ben, I want to teach you, or Outer Armstrong at the time, he said, I want to teach you the four laws of mind function. Because I believe by understanding the four laws of mind function, you will be able to know how to control a lot of how you... Um, uh, how to control yourself better in circumstances, how to accomplish things. And so he taught me the law, four laws of mind function. And the first law was, um, your mind must think. The vision always starts from the mind. And so the first law of, law, of the law, four laws of mind function was that your mind must think. Pretty self-explanatory, right? It will always be thinking, no matter you're, whether you're asleep or no matter whether you're awake, your mind will always be thinking. It will never be asleep. Second law of the law of, um, uh, law of mind function. Second law is that mind thinks boundlessly. Now, what does this mean? What's your thoughts just on what, what this law means? The mind thinks boundlessly. It's like dreaming. I wake up sometimes and think, how did I ever think of that? <laughs> I couldn't have thought of it if I tried and gave it. Right. Mm. Um, boundless. I, I don't know how long planes have been around for, but let's just say 100 years ago, before the first plane was ever um, you know, thought of, someone thought of the plane. Um, and then from there, they created the plane. Uh, same with cars, the same with anything, right? You can think of, your, your mind thinks boundlessly. It, you have no limitations to what you can think of and how far you can think of these things. And it's important to understand that this can be used in both good thoughts and bad thoughts. And we've seen that, right, in, in history of those that have committed the most horrendous um, crimes and, um, and wars, have created all these wars that, um, that just wiped out millions and hundreds of thousands of families. Um, it's so horrendous that, uh, that basically these individuals that started this, you know, they, they, um, they thought of these things. And then through these thoughts, they, uh, they started to, to um, apply them. So the first law, again, is mind must think. The second law is mind thinks boundlessly. And then the third law is mind thinks exclusively. OK, 
Okay, apologies, I should have had this up on my PowerPoint presentation, but I was only going to share it if I felt prompted to share it. Um, mind thinks exclusively. What, uh, Malachi, what do you think that means? Give it a go. Thinks exclusively. Yeah. Um, well, it sounds like it could have several meanings. I guess, um, I think uh, that the mind is the part that um, is the only thing that can make these things happen. No. Cool. No. Um, Eddie, you're going along the right, uh, the right path, bro. Yeah. Exclusively. Like, uh, there's nothing else that will do the thinking. Cool. Okay. Yeah, we're going on the right way. Anyone else want to give it a shot? What does mind think exclusively mean? I, I think it could mean that <coughs> has the ability to think in a one particular line of thought if, when you want to. Perfect. You've got the ability to do that. Perfect. So we've got we've bounced from what Malachi was saying, and then we're going to um, what Alfia was saying here, and and that is that is correct. The law of the of mind thinks exclusively means that our mind can only think of one thing at a time. Yes, something specific. Um, so your mind. Some people think that I'm multitasking and I'm thinking of two things at once and I'm doing multiple things at once, which we are doing multiple things at once. But the mind can actually only think of one thing at a time. It moves so fast between thoughts that you sometimes trick yourself and might think, I've actually been thinking of two things at once. When in actual fact, the speed of thought is faster than the speed of light. And so um, you're, you're chopping and changing these thoughts so fast that it, it, it can come across as if you're thinking of two things at once. Now, why is this important? Imagine if you had the ability, with the imperfections that we have, to think of the most horrendous thing that you've ever thought of in your life, and then the most joyous thing that you've ever thought of in life. Try and imagine thinking of those th two things at the exact same time. I guess, thank goodness we can't. Yes, exactly. We can shut one out. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. We can't. And, and that is a blessing to us, mm -hmm. that Heavenly Father has given us an opportunity as imperfect beings to only focus on one thing at a time. And we can use that to our advantage. If we only focus on good things all the time, then we only do good things. And if we focus on bad things all the time, sad things and um, anxiety, depression, it will continue for us. We will continue to go down that path and only think of those things. And this comes into the last law of mind function, the fourth. The fourth law of mind function is mind drives body. So your mind drives your body in fulfillment of your most dominant thought. So again, I'll say it again. The fourth law of mind function that I was taught was that your mind drives your body in fulfillment of your most dominant thought. Corin, what do you think that means? <clears throat> Just, I think, like, whatever you're thinking in your mind, um, whatever occupies your mind most of the time, it'll start to manifest itself. Perfect. It's exactly what happened. It is. Your mind, if you think of one thing, and you become passionate about it and emotionally attached to that thought, your body will eventually start to follow those thoughts. You will start to action those things. Again, we can see that on both sides of the spectrum, from the most joyous things that can happen in our lives um, to the most horrendous things. Now, and it's your, your mind controls your body. Exactly. It is the motherboard. It's the control center, as some people may call it. It's, um, it's the... It's the um, uh, yeah, it's the control center, the motherboard. There's, there's so many different meanings for it. So whatever you do is influenced by your mind. Exactly. It always starts from the mind. Everything you see around you, the TV, the walls, the building, everything started before it came to fruition and, and physically it started in here. Someone thought of it. Someone had a vision of these things. 
And then from the vision, they were emotionally attached to the vision. They were physically and committed to it, um, mentally committed to, to the vision. And by doing that, their body and their actions followed. Now I can tell you right now that a lot of us, we don't realize this, but we, we have been doing these things our whole lives. Try and think back to a time when you thought of something first off. Uh, maybe a goal again, or it might just be an action of some sort. Recently, maybe yesterday, or through this week, or this last month, or year, where you thought of it first, and you thought of an idea. And then from this idea, you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it, but I, I, I don't know how to accomplish it, but I want to do it. Um, and then you keep thinking of this idea, and over and over and over. And then somehow, in some way, you all of a sudden see, see start finding that your body starts to action itself towards accomplishing that idea. Um, I don't know if you can think of, a, a, of an experience that you might have had, but um, whether you know it or not, it's happened. Uh, from the smallest, from the smallest thing to the, um, to, you know, from the smallest goals, day-to-day -day goals to the most largest goals. It's how it works. So, why is it important to have this knowledge? Why is it so important to understand these four laws of mind function? Why did Clyde Bodden turn to me and say, Arthur Armstrong, you want to accomplish these big things, you want to do these amazing things, I want to teach you these four laws of mind function. It gives you power. It gives you power. The power of an everyday vision board. Right? Power is the key. We, talk, we learn about you know, um, faith and, and faith in Jesus Christ, and when we apply faith in Jesus Christ, it gives us power. You think about a car that has no power, compared to a car that has power. Which one is going to win in a race? Which one's going to make it to the other end? The f first. Which one's going to have enough energy and power to be able to continue to withstand the, um, the terrain? It's the one with the power, the most power. And so, I, um, I hope that I give you those, um, that knowledge with an understanding that this knowledge can give you power. Because now you know this, as soon as you think of a thought or an idea, if you stick to focusing on that idea and that vision, and you start thinking of other ways that can help you to accomplish that idea, then you're, you start to get emotionally attached to that idea. And emotions is very important when it comes to accomplishing something. If you are really em emotional um, about that thing, then it increases your capability of accomplishing it. It starts here and then it ends here. And when it ends here, then it starts to manifest, manifest itself through actions. So this is gospel teachings, right? Uh, literally, that's how the spirit works, here and here. Um, and so as you do that, your body and your actions will follow. Even if you don't know how to, how, how to accomplish this goal or this vision, to start off with, You're, you will find a way. I promise you that. The same with my story about Samoa in 2018. I had no idea how I was going to get my wife and I to a family reunion two months later. No idea. I had nothing lined up to be able to find the income to be able to get us there, as well as to keep us safe when we came back for a couple of weeks. But while I, you know, was able to get back into work. But somehow, in some way, I was emotionally attached to it, and I thought of it so strong, and I wanted to accomplish it, that I put it into a system, and it worked. And did, did your wife also get on board and was as emotionally attached? So you supported each other? She was. She was in different ways. Um, but by all means, both ways helped us to get there. By all means. So. Um, Proverbs 29.18 famous scripture uh, where there is no vision where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he thoughts on what that means to you in your own words Malachi what's your thoughts um, I guess the, what's key about vision is um, it's what keeps us on the to what we want to accomplish or I guess if we if we don't have a vision we don't know what we want to accomplish and so it, you end up yeah wherever that's it 
It's this, right? What we're talking about. Just ride with the waves. <laughs> it doesn't get you where you want to get to. I can tell, I can tell you that. And one of my most favorite scriptures that testifies of the truthfulness of this. This is another scripture. Proverbs 23, 7. And a lot of people don't know about this scripture, but Clyde Modern taught me this one as well and helped me to understand that this is, this is gospel. What I'm teaching you is gospel. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It starts from here, and as you manifest it here, and get emotionally attached here, it will start to happen. He will become, so is he, he will become what you are thinking of the most. Truth. And I, I just hoped that up today I could speak doctrine today. Truth. Um, because we resonate with truth. It helps us to make a difference in our behavior when we understand truth. And so this has been here the whole time. And now that you understand this, I hope that this, this application and the system that I give you will really help. Um, we become what we think about the most. Just another thought that comes to mind that I really love. Okay, so you've probably been waiting for this vision board thing to come up after I've talked about, we're talking about vision boards and how does this work? I wanted to bring my vision board to you and to show you today. Um, and then I wanted to talk to you about the concept of, that I've been taught about vision boards and how it's helped me to accomplish. This. I, uh, before I, I should have shared this. But um, before I learned about the vision boards and applied it, I was probably accomplishing 5 to 10 percent of my goals. In all reality, goals that I set to accomplish, I was probably only accomplishing 5 to 10 percent of them. When I learned and applied the vision board concept, I, I, I started accomplishing 75 to 80 percent of my goals. Huge difference. The twenty percent is the why I didn't get. I haven't got to hundred years because my own discipline, my own choices. That's the only reason why it's not. At, I'm not at hundred percent yet. So yeah, perfect. Let me tell you about them. Um, this is um, what I wanted to mention to you is that there is there's multiple different ways of creating a vision board. My way is not the only way. And it's probably not the only way to accomplish your goals either. There are multiple different ways of doing it. And so these are just some examples of what some vision boards have done. Some people have created in their vision boards. This is some ways that they've created them. I just got off the internet. A place where you can put images, visions of what you want to accomplish, thoughts and feelings. Yes, quotes. What they do is to, uh, just write. What's that, sorry? To do, I just make to-do list. And if I accomplish it, I write the date. And I it. There we so go. that's another way. Yes. That's actually part of the system. Oh, yeah. So that's the daily thing, isn't it? Yes. That's the future thing. Yes, that's it. We have to think of it before we, we start to, uh, to apply it, right? Uh, but these are just in some images and some examples of how to create a vision board. I just wanted to show you that my way is not the only way. This vision board um, I've had for uh, the last two years and have been applying it and using it for the last two years. Um, and it's a system. See, when I first started the vision board, I just heard about this concept. I thought, awesome, I'm going to put things on a wall, and then I'm going to accomplish them. And that's what I did. I just chucked things on there. And then for some reason, I thought, if I just look at them every day, and go back to my normal day, and then just come back and look at it again, it's going to come to fruition. Um, it's not how it works. <laughs> I learned very quickly that I wasn't accomplishing my goals, so I had to have a system in place uh, where I was actually doing something to, to help get there. So I came across this concept. Eric Bailey was his name. I learned about um, Eric Bailey's concept of, uh, of a vision board through a mentor of mine in the States. Um, he taught me that this is how he was taught. He told me that this is how he accomplished his goals, my mentor in the States. Um, David Miller is his name. and then I applied what he taught me. And that's how simple, as simple as it is. And you don't know how to do something, you find someone that does, and then you copy them. And so that's what I did. Um, so he, the way he did it is he, he categorized it into nine different sections. And each of these sections just represented like main areas of his life. For him it was wealth, reputation, spirituality, relationships, health, 
love, career, hobbies, and fulfillment. So these were key areas for him that he found that he wanted to focus on. And I liked them, so I just copied them. And I took that. What he does, does from here is he puts one image on each, um, it, on each section, on each category. Not two, not three. You might want to accomplish a whole bunch in the one. Start with one. Because again, what's the third law of mind function? The mind thinks exclusively. You can only think of one thing at a time. If you try to put too many wealth goals into your wealth goal vision board part, then you're going to, it's, it's going to create a lot of havoc. It's going to create no consistency of thought. You know, you're, not going to, you're going to try and think of too many goals at once in that area. So think of one thing in the Department of Wealth. And then once you've accomplished that one thing, then you go to the next one, you take it off. So this is how it works. One image, each area. <coughs> you have a book. The book is your journal, your diary. And the system that I was taught was, every morning for five minutes when you wake up, you go to your book, you stand in front of your vision board, you look at the, the images on the vision board, and you write down action steps. Something that you can do that day, even though, even if it's just something small that you can do that day to try and get closer towards accomplishing that goal. For example, my health goal is to get into better shape. So for me, the one thing that I might write on my book is, go to the gym today. That's going to get me closer towards that goal. But that's what I'm doing. I'm not only just writing down steps to get there, I'm also writing down positive affirmations. In, the, in my journal. I can do this, I'm going to accomplish it. And you'll find that if you, if you were to look through my book, that that's some of the times I'll say that. I will do this. I will accomplish it. Because again, through the thoughts, comes to your heart, from your heart comes the actions, and you accomplish what you, you believe you can accomplish the most, even if it's the most needed. So, in my concept, you have the vision board, the journal, and then comes the book of evidence. Everyone has to ask, you know, when you see things like this that you've never seen before, you're like, oh, does it really work though? Like, can you prove that this works? Because I have a lot of goals and I want to do these things, but I only want to do something that's actually going to work. And so this is what got me the, bit, uh, the most, was having a book of evidence. <laughs> Mine's pretty ugly. <laughs> so, you got two books. That's it. One there. This one I use daily. This one I only use when I've accomplished a goal to show evidence that I've accomplished it. Alright, so for example, I had this one on, um, on my career goals, which is the job uh, that will support us, which was to create my own business. Um, and I accomplished that. This was back in July 2018. It was reading the Book of Mormon and, comp and finishing the Book of Mormon. See, on my spiritual goal. Now I have um, accomplishing and finishing the, the Māori Book of Mormon because I'm learning Te Reo, Māori. Another one, going to Samoa. And the way the Book of Evidence works is I, I um, grab my image that I've put on the wall. I get a snapshot of the evidence of me accomplishing that goal. And then I get a piece of paper and I write down my experience during that time of how I accomplished that. So that's how the book of evidence works. Cool? Makes sense? I've accomplished multiple things. That was that month of, of bringing in enough income to go to Samoa and to do that. This was um, going to the temple every week before it closed. My wife and I had a goal to do that for the last couple of months. This one was finishing the uh, Doctrine and Covenants. This one was started getting my first client as a, uh, for my own business. This one is doing a garden because I really wanted to do my own garden and I had never done it before. This one was making kombucha for the first time I wanted to do that and so I put it on there. See, the goals don't have to be huge. They don't have to be lofty. Actually start with little ones and then as you start to build confidence in the system, and how it works, then you can start, then if you want, you can start to put bigger goals on, on there. Alright, so these are all personal to me. And this stuff here will not resonate with you. It only resonates with me, and that's the most important thing. Alright, you don't have to want every MacBook product <laughs> that's out there. 
but I do. That's just me personally and what I want. So I'm going to put that down there and I'm going to start accomplishing goals to get it. Um, same with the vehicle, right? Like I, um, we, we ran on a Toyota Corolla in 1992 for like two years, my wife and I, three years. It was rugged. It was, it was like barely holding on. And um, we had it for so long. And, and anyway, I, I just, I want to get a more reliable car. And so I put down on the vision board that I wanted a Swift, Toyota Swift, because actually it's what my wife wanted. Um, I put down how much I wanted to get it for. I said, this is how much I'm going to pay for the Swift. And I want it to be like this. And now we have a nice Swift. So it works. <laughs> it works. Um, again, just another financial goal that we're able to accomplish and another spiritual goal with the Pearl of Great Price now I've gone through. So, um, this is evidence that this stuff works. A system in place, a successful system in place creates success. So, what are we going to do today? Let's create your, your own vision board. I will do it in 2020. Yes, what do I have here? <laughs> we are going to get started and I'm going to give you the tools to be able to start your vision board. Okay, you've got, you've got to find your own book and journal and stuff like that and get that started, but I wanted to get you started so you're, you're already on the right path. So what I want you to do is I want you to hand those out. Is this enough? Um, hopefully there's enough. And we're going to work together on accomplishing these nine areas. Okay? Thank you. Now, anyone that, um, anyone that uh, has just heard about the new youth um, change in, in general conference? Yes. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Is, does any of this kind of resonate with what's been happening in that, that uh, with those changes? Does anyone know what's happened? The, are you talking about the change in duty to God and personal progress? Yeah, How and personal like progress. Yeah. They've got that goal setting, it's like a fighting yeah. top of fire sort of thing. Yeah, they've got the four different sections, right? Physical, I think emotional, um, spiritual, and something intellectual. else. Intellectual. That's it. That's the vision board. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> he simplified it to four pieces, and I think that's awesome. And I think if you want to do it that way, you you do that way. I just want to give you a head start with doing something and actioning that. Okay, so. What are those four? Sorry. Sorry. What are the four? Um, it was physical, physical spiritual, spiritual, intellectual, intellectual and social. social. And you'll find that um, in the curriculum if you go to church on Sunday and ask for those um, that information. So this is what we're going to do. I've got sticky notes. I've got pens, and I want you to think of your goals in these four different areas. And I want you to write it down on the sticky note, and then I want you to stick it on that board, on that, um, that section, okay? And as we do this, ask questions. I want you to make sure that you're feeling, you understand on, on how you want to do this, um, and, and moving forward with it. Something that I didn't mention before was it depends on, it's actually, it all depends on how fast you want to accomplish these goals too. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. When I first started the vision board two years ago, I put down little sticky notes of dates. I was, I was, um, I was, uh, what's the word, um, audacious enough to put down a specific date that I was going to accomplish that goal. And then it would push me to accomplish that. And I did multiple of them like that. And then I've also put down goals here where I haven't put down dates. And I've accomplished them but not in a specific time. They've just been accomplished over time. So it's up to you how you want to do that. Um, obviously, it requires a lot more faith to put down a goal, uh, sorry, a date of when you're going to accomplish it, um, but it works. Trust me, it works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand some of these out. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, half them, that's cool. Um, or even just start grabbing some of them because we're going to use this for my last one at 3 o'clock um, as well. Grab a pen if you need a pen. Does anyone need a pen? Everyone's got one. Cool. Gotcha. Oh. Okay, that works. Awesome. And we're going to be vision board creating. <laughs> you can thank my sister for this idea because I was just going to I was just going to present from uh, from my PowerPoint. 
and not do anything physical like this, but she said, no, you've got to do this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would, you would do more motivated to do it by like, you know, every visual stand this word. Exactly. That's what I learned today. She was right. Okay. So reputation just might be something physical that helps you to represent who you are and who, who you want to be uh, physically, te uh, temporarily. Does that make sense? So I have my car, the Swift, on there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So for me, reputation, that's what it meant to me and that's what it meant to, I just copied it based on Eric Bailey's concept. So, yeah. What sort of business do you have? Uh, I have a marketing agency, uh, and then I'm also working on a couple of startups yeah, so in the cultural industry. Actually, I'm wanting to work a lot more in the Māori industry. So. Yeah. What's a marketing industry? Uh, a marketing agency. So um, we just provide a service to help market companies online, to so help you to get, get yourself out there, help you to bring in more customers, make a better income. Yeah. It doesn't work? No? Cool? No. I mean, that's my pen. It's, it's oh. run out. <laughs> Let's try that one. See, see if that one actually... It's run out, I think. Oh, there you go. Try that one. Cool. It's kaput, that one. Do you want this one still? Yeah. Lucky dip for someone else. Great question, though. Um, don't hesitate to write a, uh, ask any more questions, too, please. You don't have to do these things, but just and you don't have to listen. Just as you do this, I'll talk here and there. Um, but on my wealth goal, I got these uh, withdrawal um, checks from down at Kiwi Bank um, because it just helped me to feel that it was more real by doing that rather than just writing it on a blank piece of paper. What I wanted to accomplish in my wealth goal, it just every time I looked at it, it made me, it helped me to feel like that was becoming real. And it's important because these things, these images, have to connect emotionally to you as well. So, for me, I write down, I wrote down, I got that um, check, and I've written down almost like I'm giving the check out to myself on that date that I want to accomplish this goal. So. You'll find that even like on our loved one, my loved one here, um, it can probably go within both spiritual and love or even relationship as well. Uh, but this is just how I wanted to do it. For me, I wanted for my wife and I to be able to go to the Brisbane Temple um, within the next year. And so I put a goal out there that we were going to go to Brisbane to the temple for some sessions and things since the temple's closed here. Um, and I want to go to the Brisbane one. And so I put that on there, and now we have tickets to go in February. We're able to save and, and get that, make that happen, because we focused on that. So, yeah, that, that could be between any, but that's what I wanted to accomplish. I have also sometimes taken goals off and changed them over time, because my, my vision changed of what I wanted to do in that area. My focus and priorities changed. And so that's okay too. You may put one on there and you may try and work towards it and realize actually that's not what I want. This is actually what I want. And you change it. Cool? Cool.
Fast. We've got three minutes. <laughs> Actually, and let me give you my thoughts on that um, because this is a good, uh, a, a good discussion to have at another time, hopefully, if you're ever interested. But, um, uh, Sister, what was your name? Sorry. Bradley. Sister Bradley. Sister Bradley gave, gave, uh, brought up a good, uh, a good, um, a good uh, discussion on how she's done vision boards before, how she's put things on there, and she, no matter how hard she tried, she just couldn't accomplish it by the sounds of it. Is mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. Um, this is this is what I understand about accomplishing anything in life. First, you have to have the thought. Second, you have to have the emotional attachment. If you have both, and you are emotionally attached to a point where nothing will stop you from accomplishing that thing, Heavenly Father places things in your path to where, if you take those opportunities, they will help you to accomplish those goals that are on there. No matter how hard it is, no matter how big it is, if you are emotionally attached, and it's something that's good, of praiseworthy, that will help you to become better and better yourself, Heavenly Father will just align things in your life. No matter, and it might be so small that you might not, if you're not recognizing it, you might not recognize it as an opportunity to help you accomplish that goal. But they come, and they always come. And if you see them and you take them, they will help you get closer and closer to that goal. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. I'm a firm believer in that, that you can accomplish anything you set your mind to, as long as you are emotionally attached. And Heavenly Father knows whether or not you're committed. He knows whether or not this is important to you. And sometimes you have to look into yourself. I'm not saying this is not you, sister, but um, sometimes we, I have to look into myself and go, do I really want to accomplish that? Is it really important to me? Cool. Hopefully that helps in just some thoughts on, on what you're going to do. But that's my perspective on accomplishing things that you probably don't realise, don't think you can accomplish. And I think too, sometimes, you know, just recently I've had, I need to do that and that and that, and they've been major important things, and it's not working. Yeah. But you've got to keep on going. Mm -hmm. You may have to find a different way of accomplishing it. Mm -hmm. Just look at it from a different way. Perfect. Go and find the information you need to, you know, if it's got to get done, it's got to get done. That's it. And it will get done if, yeah. if you have that mentality and you just stick to it. Again, there will be other ways that you accomplish that. You didn't even think you would be doing that way to accomplish it. But it will come up. 
opportunity will be always come information up. information that you didn't know at the, in the first instance, yeah. that you find out, okay, that's the reason that it could exactly. happen in the first place. Belief in, in yourself to know that you can accomplish it is really vital as well. Yeah. So, let's finish up there. Even if you just put one word or one thing in there, not you don't have to do it today, but you've got this material now to take with you. Uh, you've also got this material to show around to everyone else so that <laughs> when it comes to my next presentation, you tell them go to this presentation. <laughs> um, I have another, my, my last one's in the afternoon at 3, I think it is, 3 or 5, so... Um, just a little, uh, yeah, <laughs> little put, uh, push in there. Um, I just want to finish off with this quote, uh, which is, Wake up every day and work towards the vision you have for yourself. Let obstacles, failure, and loss act as motivation. Uh, I'm a firm believer in it, and that's exactly what I've just kind of mentioned. We've just talked about just then. Don't let any obstacle or failure stop you from accomplishing it, and you will find a way. That's kind of another concept is the law of attraction, if you've heard of, ever heard of that before. I'm a firm believer in it too. Uh, it's just, it's the gospel, just said in a different way. There we go. So, um, it's acting in faith. It literally is. It's having a firm belief. It's acting, and by doing that and having that emotional attachment, you accomplish Goals. Don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. I think there's a lot in that last two lines. Yep. I mean, if you fail, it's not that you have failed, you just suck and got to learn something. Exactly. Yeah. It's not a failure, right? It depends on how you look at it. It's a you lesson. Should, uh, lots of people give up. It doesn't work the first time they give up. Mm -hmm. Keeps you strong. But if you learn the lesson involved in why they failed, and sometimes I think. You should have failed. I mean, you need to fail because it's not the right way yeah. to be going. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure if it's Jim Carrey or Michael Jordan. Very different. Yeah, people. but they're very inspirational <laughs> quotes. Both of them are. <laughs> but one of them said something like, I haven't failed a, a thousand times. I've found out a thousand ways how not to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure which one, but... Yeah, I'm trying to remember too because I'm good. <laughs> um, Alexander Bell. Yeah. 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 That's so awesome. To him too. Thank you so much for coming today. In one word, starting from uh, quorum, going all the way through to the back and then to the front, I want you just to give me one word of what today's experience and learnings felt like for you. Um, empowering. Empowering? Cool. Uh, putting more stuff into practice. I've, I've done vision work before and a lot of this stuff, but it's kind of having another fresh look at it and and find it. So practice. Faith in yourself. Faith. Awesome. Passion. Passion. I just loved, not one word, but I just loved how you said, you know, thought to, to emotion. Get your output. Awesome. Rejuvenating. Rejuvenating. Mm -hmm. um, steering me <coughs> on course. Steering. Thank you for coming today. Go out, accomplish these things. I promise you, your percentage of accomplishing goals will skyrocket by applying this. I don't know if I say in the name of Jesus Christ, I mean or not. But